the 223 Remington versus 5.56 NATO. Now, if you're new to firearms, this may be a little bit confusing because some people will say that these are the same. Dave and I are gonna to explain to you right now why they aren't. Everyone, this is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than ammo.com. Now, Chris, I answer a lot of questions from a lot of first time gun owners, and God bless them, they're trying to master a pretty arcane science. Yep. A lot of folks who just opened up their Ruger 556 want to know if they can fire 223 REM in their new rifles. Likewise, a lot of people who have 223 REM rifles want to know if they can safely fire 556. And I have very different answers for either of those folks. No, Dave, you're absolutely right. This is one that uh, really kind of suffers from a bit of a naming convention. And uh, it can be confusing uh, to a lot of new shooters. So I'm really glad we're doing this. I know we've talked about it before in previous episodes. Uh, and if you want to get notified uh, whenever we upload new stuff here on the channel, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below. And also check out the link in the pinned comment and in the description down there because we've got a free coupon for you for $20 off your next order at ammo.com. And so if you're in the market for getting some 223 or 556, that's definitely the place to go. But yeah, there's really a big difference between the 556 and the 223. And the simple answer is pressure. It's all about that pressure. And uh, the, the short answer that we'll give you right now is you can safely fire 223 in a 5.56 chamber but not the other way around. Now, Dave and I are going to explain uh, why that is because there's a little bit of gunsmithing that gets into this to, to really understand what the difference between the two is. Hey, Chris, just for starters, do you know offhand the differences in chamber pressures for these two rounds? Because it's my understanding that 5.56 five, isn't so dramatically more powerful that you're guaranteed to blow up your rifle if you fire one round through it. No, you're absolutely right. It's not the situation of firing, you know, say, I mean, even like a 357 Magnum round through a 38 Special Revolver, it's not that bad. Uh, and there have been plenty of cases where people will say, well, I've been firing 5.56 five, through my 223 rifle forever, and there's never been a problem. And yeah, that can happen. It's interesting, you know, talking about the specifications of the two cartridges, because there's a little bit of uh, leeway uh, is the best way I can describe it between the two governing agencies that deal with uh, standardizing munitions. And that is SAMI, the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manuf Manufacturers Institute, and the CIP, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. Yeah, it's on like this. 82 words long in French. It really is. And I am terrible with that. So just to save everyone who are French listeners who would correct me on my pronunciation, I'm just not even going to try it. But those are the two major governing agencies uh, that cover, uh, you know, ammunition standardization. Uh, Sammy, of I'm course. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got to interrupt. I just picture yeah, yeah. the French listeners angrily stamping out their Galois <laughs> cigarettes into their croissants and reaching <laughs> over to their computers to shake them Frenchly. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they would reach through the screen and, and uh, like, sacre bleu. You know, it, it would be terrible. They would uh, not be happy with my pronunciation there. But uh, as I was saying, you know, it's like Sammy covers uh, cartridges here in North America. CIP mostly covers Europe and NATO, uh, particularly. And it's interesting because in doing some research for this, like I said, there is a bit of difference uh, in what each regulatory agency rates both rounds for. I'm going to pull this up so that no one can, you know, lambast me in the comments. But there is about a 5,000 PSI difference between the two based on the specifications. Now, uh, see the Sammy, excuse me, rates uh, 223 Remington max pressure is 55,000 PSI. CIP, they're a little bit different. They say that uh, you know 223 can handle up to about 60. PSI. Of course, they use MPA or megapascals, uh, so we won't go into the, the weeds on the differences in pressure readings, but it's about a 5,000 PSI difference, and they list 556 five, as the higher number, 5,000 PSI higher, so about 60,000 PSI. But so in simpler terms, yeah. the 5.56 five, is just generating more pressure when on ignition. It and is. Of course, if your action isn't solid enough to absorb that much mm -hmm. more pressure, 
then you're looking at a uh, an expensive problem and maybe finger reattachment surgery if you're really unfortunate. Definitely. You don't want to have somebody opening up your ketchup jars if you can, you know, avoid it. Uh, if at all possible. Uh, But it's a little bit more than just the pressure of the round itself. It actually goes into the design of the specific chamber for each cartridge that really separates the two. Now, is it only differences in chamber dimensions or are the rounds themselves ever so slightly different in exterior dimensions? So this is something where, uh, you know, it's different between 308 and 762 by 51. Uh, So for... 308 and 762 by 51, there are actually differences. The the brass itself on 762 NATO ammunition is a bit thicker than what we get in 308. For 556 and 223, they are absolutely identical. So you could get a pair of calipers out and do all the different measurements on the, the cartridge case itself, and you will not be able to tell the difference between a 223 case and a 556 NATO case. In other words, thank God for the head stamp. Yes, that is the way you tell. And uh, we'll roll in a picture here that has the differences of the head stamps for you to be able to tell. But on the on the bottom where the primer's at, it'll typically say either 223 REM. That's the best way to tell you've got a 223 Remington case. Uh, and then it can also say 556. You could also have a three-letter designation, basically meaning the armory that made it, and then the NATO cross, which is basically a, a cross with a circle around the outside. Yeah. They won't put that cross on a 223 REM load. That is for sure. They would not, you know, sully a, uh, you know, a a piece of 223 brass with a NATO cross on it. That is for sure. (laughs) You're a big fan of NATO, I see. Honestly, Um, honestly, I'm I'm a fan of both, uh, to be honest. But uh, I'm trying to get into my to my European mindset here. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, but, I don't but, know what they do over there. I know they speak weird languages, except in England, and even then, it's kind of hit or miss. I've been to several countries in Europe, and it is an experience to say the least. Uh, my personal, my personal favorite story was when I was in the UK, actually, and uh, we we're at a restaurant, and I ordered, uh, you know, the the fried fish, and they're like, "Oh, do you want chips with that?" I'm like, "No, but I'll have some French fries." And <laughs> Anybody who knows uh, it's the like most stereotypical American, it was. I, I, I'm. I might as well have been wearing an American flag shirt at that point because someone leaned over to me like they're the same thing. I was like, oh, you might, you might as well go to Japan and and uh, get upset about the raw fish, right? Yeah, it's pretty much like that. So that was my my moment when I was younger, uh, my learning moment of different dialects and things of that nature. But yeah, the the big difference is, uh, you know, yes, the the five five six rounds are loaded a little bit hotter, a little higher pressure, but also the big difference uh, is the chamber design. And they they modified the two two three chamber basically to give it more reliability when they made the five five six. Of course, we've all heard the horror stories from Viet- the Vietnam War when the the air, excuse me, the M16 and the 223 were first introduced to U.S. troops, and there was a lot of issues with jamming, things like that. And most of those were, of course, remedied later on with you know chrome lining the chamber, fire, uh, distributing cleaning kits, things like that to make sure that those chambers were clean. But it was still a, an issue that the military wanted to solve, and the CIP decided, hey, we're just going to do it. And so, yeah, go ahead. So I want to just point out with the naming differences. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just for a little bit of background, obviously Remington developed the 223 Rem, the round they put their name on. And the 556, you're saying that was was the the next step where they refined it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, It was FN uh, that decided to basically make the 556, make it into a NATO cartridge. Uh, whereas the 223, uh, was made earlier on, uh, pre-Vietnam. Uh, it was, let me see here. Let me pull up the data or the, uh, the actual year. Cause again, I don't want people to correct me. It was the, uh, let's see the 308 was introduced in 54. And yeah, the beginning, they started developing the 223 REM in 1957. Uh, so just a little bit after the 308 came out. Uh, so obviously the 223 has, is technically older uh, as it came in in the 50s, whereas the 556 came in in the early 80s. Oh, I didn't I didn't know it was that recent. Mm-hmm. That's uh, my mind is blown. You do raise a very interesting point, and in, uh, it's not just the cartridges that are different; it's the chamber itself. Yes, which is the perfect segue into the beauty of the 223 Wild. 
Oh, yes. So to give you guys a little explanation of how the chambers are different and how uh, Bill Wilde basically made the best of both worlds was uh, essentially when you're building a chamber, there's a portion between the mouth of the case and the rifling. It's called the lead. Uh, and lead distance, we can get into the weeds on this and we could probably talk about it for a good 20 minutes, but the boiled down, easy to understand version is if you have a greater distance, you're going to increase your, your reliability somewhat because then there's less potential for a jam for things to get in there. Uh, but it also reduces the amount of pressure that's inside the chamber. If you have a shorter lead, then your bullet's going to be in there tighter. It's closer. There's less space for it to move around. Could potentially lead to more jams, but also creates higher pressure. Now, you might be like, well, wait a minute, Chris. You told me that the 5.56 five, was higher pressure. It is, and that's the problem. If you take a 5.56, five, which is dimensionally exactly the same as a 2.23, and you put it in that 2.23 chamber, you're going to have a higher pressure round in a chamber that naturally causes higher pressure itself. And... The thing is with pressures is it's never linear. It's always an exponential function. Uh, and when you have that, you could be, if you fired a 5.56 five, in a 223 chamber, you could be potentially 10 to 15,000 PSI over max pressure for the round. And that's where the problem comes in. So <clears throat> in, in essence, it's not just the ammo, it's mm -hmm. the chambers themselves. Yes, absolutely. Like you were saying about uh, Mr. Wild, mm -hmm. he, he kind of the best of both worlds situation and designed a chamber that would opt for optimal accuracy, whichever round you're firing. Yes, absolutely. And this was, this is kind of the, the best of both worlds situation where, uh, he basically, he took the chamber angle from the, uh, the five, five, six and the lead from the two, two, three and put them together, made this, you know, non, egotistical chamber that he named after himself, uh, you know, and uh, basically made the best of both worlds. And you'll see this. This is uh, it's something that, that comes more and more that I'm seeing in AR-15 barrels is most of them are being chambered in 223 Wild now just to com completely avoid this issue. Yeah, that's um, that makes me like I've always wondered, can you even tell the accuracy different? I know. 223 REM won't deliver its best possible accuracy out of a 5.56 chamber. That's for true. the reasons you just said. Mm -hmm. Would the normal guy ever notice a difference? I doubt it. In accuracy. I doubt it, to be honest with you. I think we're splitting hairs at this point. And then if you're shooting for, you know, supreme accuracy with your 223, you know, are we, I don't even think we'd even be talking a half MOA at this point, uh, which is a half an inch at, at a hundred yards. I doubt that you would be able to tell that people who are shooting you know, like six, seven, 800 yards, they would probably be able to tell. Uh, but I'm going to include myself in this as I always do. I can't shoot that far with a two, two, three. So, uh, you know, most of us, the average shooter, will never be able to tell. The The important thing is just to make sure that you're putting the right ammunition in the right chamber. Yeah. Well, as a guy who can't shoot that far with a laser pointer, I still like the idea <laughs> of the uh, 223 Wild. I might not get the best. And if they're if they're standard now in the AR-15s and uh, you don't even have to rechamber your firearm, just go buy one new. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not something that you must go out and do right now. It's like, oh my gosh, I've got a five, five, six chamber. I need to go drop everything and go buy a two, two, three wild barrel. No, you, you really yeah. don't. Um, you're going to be totally fine. And honestly, the five, five, six chamber is probably the safest out of all of them because you can fire two, two, three, you can fire five, five, six. The, the two, two, three wild just gives you that, that tiny little bit of extra accuracy that maybe some shooters want to have and not want to have to worry about segregating their ammunition out. Now, I've noticed a lot of first-time AR owners get really bent out of shape about whether they can they can fire 5.56 five, and 2.23. Mm -hmm. And it's my understanding that nearly every AR-15 you could possibly find is chambered for 5.56. Five, it was really only the early ones. Uh, you're going to really have to look for an AR-15 specifically chambered in 2.23. I would say more often than not, you'll have bolt-action rifles chambered in 2.23 as opposed to 5.56. Five, five, uh, and that's yes. because when you have that bolt-action, you want as much accuracy as you can get. Yeah, that's the whole point of a bolt. Mm -hmm. So if you just got your AR-15, you just open it up, uh, you know, confirm 
that it's chambered for 556. Five, Definitely. It's pretty safe to assume your Ruger 556 five, is chambered for 5.56. 5, pretty good assumption. I think that's pretty fair. Uh, best way to check to know uh, what your rifle is chambered is, is they stamp the thing on the barrel. Uh, so if you just bought yourself a new AR-15, pop those hand guards off real quick, and it will be stamped on the barrel what your rifle twist is typically, as well as the chamber. Uh, so you usually say like 5.56 5, by 45, one and seven or one and nine or whatever rifle twisting you have on your barrel, it'll be stamped on there and then you'll know. And if you're really confused and you're not sure, go seek out a professional gunsmith. They can tell you for sure. Yeah. Get professional help. Definitely. Definitely. And so, yeah, I mean, I think this is, this is going to be kind of a short one. I don't know much else that we can talk about this, but just make sure guys that you're shooting out of your rifle, what it's chambered in, uh, be safe. Don't make any, you know, assumptions, make sure you're shooting the right stuff out of your gun and you should have a fun time every time you go to the range. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, like you said, it's probably not the end of the world if you accidentally run a five, five, six through your two, two, three rifle, but, uh, avoid it because rifles are kind of expensive. Yeah, you know, we can talk about other disastrous, horrible things. I've seen pictures of guys who accidentally ran uh, 300 blackout through their 5.56 oh, AR-15s. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. That ain't good. No. Definitely don't want to put a 22 MR in your 22 LR. Yep. Um, if you could even fit a 357 mag into your 38 special, which you can't. Good. Well, if if you could, yeah. man, would you be would you be bummed out when uh, you had fingers in different time zones simultaneously? Yeah, not a good thing. Uh, same for forty four mag and forty four special. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> are there any other that come to mind? Like ones you got to be super duper careful about not accidentally putting in a wrongly chambered firearm? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I think you put it all through there. And we mentioned three hundred eight and uh, seven six two by fifty one, uh, which is actually the opposite. Uh, direction is yeah. five five six uh and yeah. two two three that that the nato round is loaded to it lower very pressure. slightly lower chamber pressure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's uh dimensionality so you can really uh, sammy doesn't even consider it unsafe to load to put the higher pressure 308 win into the uh 762 action so even the experts are saying you're you're kind of safe to run the higher pressure ammo through the chamber it's not designed for but uh, no one's going to tell you to, to just willy nilly run five five six through your two twenty three. Absolutely, always play it safe. Uh, make your shooting experience fun and exciting, and pass it on to the next generation because that's the important thing. Uh, you know that we train the next generation about the importance of the Second Amendment, and that we continue to you know make sure that we pass on that great heritage of our American spirit to our kids. Yeah. That and the Fifth Amendment, my two favorite amendments. Absolutely, can't have them. Can't have one without the other. That's for sure. I think there's only one more important thing than the Constitution, and that's going to ammo.com. I agree with you on that one, Dave. Make sure you get to ammo.com. Get all of your two, two, three, and five, five, six from us because we're going to have some of the best prices on the net. And of course, get that free coupon down there in the pinned comment and the description. Get you twenty dollars off. Dave, thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it, brother. And we will catch you on the next one. Oh,